Well, you've had quite a journey to get here. Tell me what's happened to you in the last couple First of days. First of all, I'm very happy and very pleased to be here. It's, it's, it's just a good feeling to be here. Uh, I was on a business trip overseas and then I heard the news and um, my younger kids, who's 14 and 17, were, I felt they were affected. They got scared. Uh, they didn't know how to handle it, so I told them, listen, I'm cutting my business trip, I'm coming back. Uh, the news was scary, just different airports, doing different things. Uh, so I made a, a number of reservations, including a plan to go through Canada and then to Windsor, to Toronto, and then go through Windsor and then go through the, uh, the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, last second is the, uh, my lawyer advised me to come through Logan Airport, Boston. Why? They just said it's the only airport that is that welcome the federal judgment and that they are uh, they would let people in. Right. Uh, when I first came here, immediately my uh, I went through the usual process. I had a big X in front of my face and my name, and then they asked me to go to a special gate. Uh, then I waited a little bit. Then a gentleman came in uh, very politely. He says, "Sir, do you know why you're here?" I said to him, "Tell me why." And then he said. Uh, because while you're gone, our president made the decree. Very kind man. He explained himself very well. And then he said, I have to ask you a few questions and then we have to check. Anyway, I was, I was really impressed. Mm. What we have to differentiate, two things here. The system and then the people. The system is unfair and unjust and, I'm, and, and I oppose and I despise what happened. But on the other hand, what I appreciate at this airport, how kind they were, how considerate they were, they came and offered us water. Uh, they were not asking intimidating questions. They're, they they will get the facts in a polite, friendly way, mm -hmm. which is important. What did you think when you heard about the presidential order? I felt angry. I was always proud to say that I lived in the States. And all of a sudden, I felt, uh, uh, a lot of people start laughing and, and, and even the treatment overseas when you show them your, your American passport and you're originally from a country like Yemen or, or, or Iraq, or it's not going to be the same ever now. So before, when you show an American passport anywhere in the world, doesn't matter what's your name, doesn't matter what's your religion, it's the same treatment. Now it's going to be, ah, no, 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 you're not American. You're not that blonde hair or white skin. And that is tough and that is unfair that this is happening. Uh, but what I appreciate is the people of America, whether it's the law enforcement people or, or, or just the people who went in the streets, very kind, very, they just touched my heart. Yeah. Even politicians, even uh, I was listening to the governor of, of Seattle, his speech, it's like I, it just, I was filled with emotions, just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a lot good happening, but it's in response to things that have made a lot of people very nervous. Uh, do you feel nervous? You say you've got children here, you, you're here, you have a green card, but uh, you know, that's yeah, not it, a guarantee it, of anything. It, it does, seems. it does. It's, uh, it makes you nervous. It makes you, especially us, um, because in our countries right now, there's civil war, there's, there's disaster, there's destruction. Where to go? What other option do you have? Nothing. So this is the dream. This is the... the this is the safety, this is the education, this is the future. But do you feel differently about it today because of this and what's happening? I trust in the, in the people and in the system. I think it will work, it will work itself out. I'm, I'm an optimist, it will work itself out. What makes you so sure? Uh, I think America have, is what it is, is because of this. Because they always at the end do the right thing. What was it like when you were coming through here? You, you say you booked a bunch of, uh, of, you made a bunch of reservations. So where were you going to go? What were your options? So I was going to go to uh, O'Hara uh, Airport through Jordan. And then I was going to go to uh, New York. And uh, New York, Washington, Dallas, O'Hara, and here. Uh -huh. And then Toronto. Uh -huh. So I had all that for. And also the lawyer sent me some papers to show the, uh, the officers here uh, that, uh, you know, they could not, withdraw our green card they cannot this uh, is a copy of the court order yeah that's yeah. the copy of the court order they cannot deport us so I was ready fortunately like I had to put it in my back pocket fortunately I didn't have to use it yeah. as I said the people here thumbs up to them very kind they got what they want in a professional way right. and I appreciate that I just want to if they ever see this I want to say thank you that court order came about because a lot of very hard-working lawyers here decided that 
they didn't agree with this and they went to court to get it. And what, what do you think about that? I think it's great. I think I think that's what that's why America is the greatest country in the world. It's about the people. It's about people getting together. It's about uniting for a good cause. It's about doing the right thing. I mean, you Always say that now because it all worked out. But when you got on that plane today to come here, you didn't know that you were. Gonna I was not sure. I was ready to go to fly back to go back, literally, or or even. Just to give you an example, I made a reservation, my connecting flight the next day. So I was expecting to stay at least 10, 20 hours there, and uh, yeah. I was surprised, and pleasantly surprised. Right, right. I know, I know that you feel very strongly about this place, but I, I have to ask you, as somebody in your situation, in this climate today, do you feel differently about this country? Is there a part of you that now worries about your future in this country? Not, not, not necessarily about my future. I'm more worried about rushed decisions worldwide. This, the, the world is not America. I know that a lot of Americans think that America is the world, but it's not anymore. Uh, you've got to do trades with the world. You've got to connect with the world. You've got to interact. Uh, you cannot isolate yourself. There is no way that you can. Because of the internet, because of the technology, the good and the bad will arrive here. Mm -hmm. So you have to have well thought of, well thought of um, policies, and not the rushed, quick decisions, not yeah. like spare of the moment. I, I presume you're Muslim, are you? I'm a Muslim, you're yes. Muslim. Yes, I am. This is being called a Muslim ban. Uh, the government denies that, but that's how people see it. As a Muslim in this country, given what's happened and given the the interest by this government to block people from those countries coming here, it must change how you view this, does it not? Uh, I'm different. I uh, I was educated here when I was younger. I'm a strong believer. I have good contacts with everybody. I'm, I'm a strong believer in that you influence people by your behavior, not by your religion, by your personality, not by who, what your color and who you are. Um, when the, if I show you my phone, hundreds of messages from from black people, from white people, from blonde people, from asking about me and worrying, uh, they're Christians and they're. Does I think really, I think who you are and how you impact the people around you influences the relations, not the religion and not the color. So I'm not, for me personally, I'm not worried. What I think it's gonna children? work out. Uh, they're, the younger ones, how to, the older ones, they're okay with it. They're, you know, they, they know how to handle themselves. The younger ones, they're panicking. Uh, it's getting to them and I, and I feel it and, and it, it breaks my heart. And that's also one of the reasons why I rushed back uh, because also I didn't want, I know in the state of chaos, there's ways to get in, but if they close it well, it will be very difficult and it would have been very hard on my kids. Yeah. When you say they're panicking, what, what are they panicking about? Uh, just, first of all, they don't have a, another country anymore, it's a state of war. And then here, uh, they're, they feel it's their country and all of a sudden they feel somebody's taking it away from them. You know, as a kid, you think, I am, you know, America is my country. And then when they see Muslims are not, or, or this color is not welcome, or this one is have to go through this and that, it hits them. They, they, uh, they see it differently. They what think are, what are you going to tell your kids when you go home tonight? About I that? just say this is a great country. Work on yourself. Improve, be better, be smarter, and everybody will accept you. That's, uh, by the end of the day, is who you are and how you work on yourself and, and always look within. The, enough blaming the world. Do you blame Mr. Others. Trump? No, I don't. I don't blame anybody. Why don't, you, why don't you blame Trump? He's the choice of the people. The people chose him. And that's democracy. That's the uh, cause. I just hope that things work out and things uh, become better. If, if people chose him, people want him to be their president. Uh, priorities to them is something else. It's not who comes in or who doesn't. Priority to them is jobs. And I, I understand. I truly understand. It's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's, it's just that's the way it is. And, and the way I look at it is work on yourself. Draw a bigger circle. Accept more people. And just the, the smaller circle they draw around you, draw a big circle and bring people in. And always work on yourself and your family. That's where change starts.